they say is well, honestly speaking, there's nothing as, as bad as conceding a goal. And coming from a background of a defender, a goal has to be beautiful, must not be careless. You're leading 2 0. It looks like you can gain confidence and build on that and play with more freedom and bravery to try put a bigger print on what you're trying to, to build. And then all of a sudden you concede a goal. And the way we considered the goal was was not was not right. It's a corner, the ball gets overfloated, second phase it comes across, then it gets played in in an offside position. Then the tapping, even the guy who played the ball was shocked that the referee allowed the ball in. But whatever it is, goal 2-1, then you start to stress. Then you have to think along very thin lines, margins of error less. But the beauty is that they scored the third beautiful goal from Mango. And also for the Mabas, the guy is talented. He's something else. Uh, any high ball coming to him, his holder play, controls the ball, brings the team closer in and around the box. From Blue Celtics, when I worked with him, when he was still at youth, when he went to Orlando Pirates, and I'm saying, Tseho, but why is it that you, you, what's lacking? He lacks nothing. And if one were to, to start thinking and saying, where, where do you want Mabasa to go? He, he's okay here. We are so extremely lucky to have him. Because the next question would be, but wait a minute, it should be somewhere else. Somewhere else where? Maybe abroad? Because the guy has got finesse, he's got the right, and he's intelligent. He's an intelligent person. So he can handle a lot of dynamics. That is where. But what we're trying to fight for is to have a team that plays more as a unit, be more cohesive, with more confidence. Doesn't come easy. And up front as well, you want to see a Malinga clicking with the Mabasa clicking with the Mango and also Zuma. He went in, but I felt Uzuma is still playing at maybe four out of ten of his potential and capacity. He needs to up and be about five, six, and then you get something out of it. And also the subs we made, I thought they had effect. But I must also be very honest and say Cape Town Spurs did give us a good game. They pushed us, they tested us, they asked a lot of questions through long balls, crosses, fighting and all that, where I think, I think to an extent, the game was a bit, it had a lot of bruises for players. It was quite, quite, quite an intense game and very physical. And unfortunately, you have to deal with it when people are fighting for points and you're also fighting to establish your positions. This is what happens. But we are delighted with the victory. Uh, international break, bittersweet, because you, you want that momentum. The, you know, momentum, I remember it sometimes last season. There was a, a heavy discussion on the weight of momentum. But the weight is big as well, because even coming into this match, we were worried about, we had played in Polokwane, and then we did not play the Orlando Pirates match because of the calf commitments. And then it gave us 10, 14 days of no action. When you come back now, you say, mm, I wonder how we're going to perform. You were banking on the momentum of the win in Poloko and then Orlando Pirates and then at least now. But we came through this one. Now you say you go into the FIFA week, 10 days at the back of victory. But going into FIFA calendar, it's always best to go with a victory because it's a long period to be thinking of the negative result and so on. So you're building with a positive with a positive feel. Yes, momentum will be affected, but at least we, we have three points. We are on seven, we won a match, second in a row. We can start talking about that and also just to deflect to the momentum discussion topic. But it does have effects on Coach, I'm looking at uh, from where we were sitting. Uh, I was watching one Andy Leja. Mm. He celebrated more than the players on the field um, when the goals came in. And uh, he had to sit down. The camaraderie, the brotherhood that I see on this team. Mm -hmm. How do you get that right? Because let me be honest and frank, Coach. When you first had your Zuma, your Jali, your Mango, and then the word was that, who's a Wenza and I'm a bad boy. <laughs> Just take us through that. I, I didn't see that incident, but if it happened, 
and one hears that it's a beautiful it's a beautiful thing to hear but again it further consolidates and 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 it does a blow to the narrative of people labeling others in, in my in my understanding and i said this i was at some press conference i don't remember what press conference was there i was fielding questions and i was asked the same question shaba and i said to them if you're dealing with a genius at some point of their life if the task is too simple they start to 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 look for something else a distraction then we call them delinquents no they are geniuses who, who aj has amazing personality you can't question that well he might he might have issues with injuries or maybe get into top shape and the guy is no more 22 24 to be honest but he, he still has the effect he still has the energy and he sees the game he's a great influence in the dressing room Cabadino the same you know his personality is aggressive he wants to win he pushes everybody even the opponents the goal he scored in Polokwane was purely out of his relentlessness again today the free kick he scores what do you say about that and by the way he does that at training now the camaraderie you're talking about should not only be something like a camouflage or just powder on the table that you can blow out it must be deep and entrenched it must be genuine it's easy to fake stuff if you look at how they celebrated the goal he scored i did not even know there's this thing with me and Mango that I always make him do push-ups and all that. Even the first time I met him in Flex Open, I was still at Three Sisters. The first encounter was push-ups. When he scored, I'm sure he was playing for safety then. I was at another club. After he scored against me, he came to my bench and did push-ups, reminding me of the punishment I gave to him in Flex Open. I was shocked when everybody was doing push-ups after he scored. It was just a sea of white, white bait on the floor doing push-ups. It feels good, it's natural, it's spontaneous, it tells you that they are enjoying it. And I'm praying that it goes further and it must be something that deals a blow to, to, to this narrative. Like Azuma. And let me pause before I go astray. What do you expect from a team if society is reflected in a team? If society is reflected in sports, expect a reflection of society in sport. If our society has got challenges of a particular caliber, expect those challenges in her sport. When Desmond Tutu said to you, you can never have a normal sport in an abnormal society, it is the same as you can never have an abnormal sport in a normal society. Society is reflected in her sport or in sports. And how sports reflects, reflects society. Now let me paraphrase and come to what am I trying to say. When you find challenges in sports, you must take that microscopic reflection of those challenges and maybe scan through society and see if there are no similarities. You are likely to find similarities. So if we're complaining about these athletes, this and that and that, we have to look at ourselves and say, are we, are we perfect? Are we at a level where our morality cannot be questioned? If we do not respond appropriately to those questions, we have no right then to question the behavior of our sports people. But we are not condoning that. We're saying there must be exemplary. <coughs> Coach, um, you, you and Coach uh, Sean come a long way. Um, you, know each other, you know each other very well and stuff. I'm on a correction, but I may, you may have beaten him before as a coach and, and stuff like that. I, I'm not sure. What, what I'm trying to get at here is that um, he's in a very tight situation. And it must, in as much as you must have enjoyed the three points, it must have been very difficult for you to, to, to push him deeper into, we, we, into a quagmire. We, we come a long way with Sean. When he was still at Chiefs working, or somewhere else we still had that connection even from national teams we have that connection having having campaigned abroad as well we had that connection and he's a he's a he's a he's an associate he's a close friend of mine but unfortunately could have been my dad 
could have been my brother on the other side line of duty there's a gesture that he, he portrayed in exchange before the match i was walking down the tunnel now as you walk down the tunnel there are some pillars where you can get behind the pillar and hide so calvin mullen had walked i was walking behind calvin mullen he picked me up coming because he was coming up i was going down and then he was hiding just as i was gonna go past him he came out you know what he said he said this is what happens to a striker when they see a defender you don't get to there it's 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 human beings behaving and but then it says to steve after the result Sean is going through this period. It's not easy. PSL is a monster. It's difficult. Getting points here, getting wins or draws is a monster. So when he's going through that, you also remember, Steve, that person, we are tied with this guy. We are buddies. We come a long way. He's a former player. I'm a former player. We interacted a lot. Long time ago, he even worked in an environment I worked in. We could associate in many ways. But this time, be minimal. Just greet and go and wish him well. The biggest message was it was to his players to say never give up. Go ask them, never give up, never give up. It's the nature of sports. There has to be a win, there has to be a loss, or there has to be a draw. And unfortunately, as is we are also desperate to, to, to leave a positive mark. Listen, I'm not safe here. I'm also new here. I'm a new kid in, in the block, so I had to make things look okay for Morocco Solos. And I'm working for Morocco Solos so, because we wish to see more people here. When Orlando Perez is playing at Orlando yesterday, you, you could love it. It's packed. When Kaiser Chiefs plays, it's packed. That's what we want to see. But that can only happen by a win. It's a question of chicken and egg. Which one comes first? Do you win and then supporters come? Or they come and make you win? In this instance, you can't say come if you want to win. You have to win and play a bit of an attractive way, something that will be appealing. Then they will start coming. If you had 10, today they must tell another 10, it's 100. That 100 and then it's a snowball. That's what we're trying to do at Moroga Solos. But it's not going to be an overnight thing. But I wish Sean the very best. I know he understands the game. He's got the pedigree. I just hope he gets enough chance because even changing him, it may be a setback a bit. I'm not buying anybody time. But I'm just trying to be realistic with regards to the challenges that coaches face. Hoping that you will come through, get a win here and there. Because I said to our team, at some point this team will have to win. And they can't lose all matches. In this season they're going to win. But hoping that it doesn't start with us. And I'm happy that we are over it, but I wish him well. Yeah. Uh, coach, start. Um, Sean Bartlett was here. He was talking about the need to get uh, strikers uh, scoring goals in this team, you know. Uh, in your case, you've got, you've spoken glowingly about uh, Zeho, you know, you also have Mango on target uh, tonight, you know. How encouraging is it for your top men to be already on the road to goals, you know? Oh, you, 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 you can't be quite tonight. And, and our wish Sean could have, could have given you the indication of what made him to score more goals. Strikers are like, it's like a, a drug. When they score, it invites more goals because then they are more relaxed, confidence is high, and this thing just becomes an automatic action. Go to Fernando Torres. Torres was fire at some point. As soon as he moved to another club, then things were not the same. What happened to him? He's not the same player. All that is confidence. So when your strikers keep scoring, keep scoring, you have to keep giving them the same picture training, same picture training, same feeling, and then it comes out in a match. So I'm happy that Mabasa is scoring, Mango must score, Zuma must quickly come and score, KG must score. When they keep scoring, and I said to them, I had a small meeting with them before we came here. It was yesterday after training. I said to them, listen, if all four of you, each one of you can give us 10 goals, guys. It's just 10 goals, it's modest. Listen. Already Gaba now is sitting on whatever free kick and all one two. So you always sitting on two today and all the three. So then you say Zuma now we always 40 goals in the Premier League. It will give you something. So the confidence has to be high. Because a striker, if, if he's under stress or he's not confident, they miss the easiest of the chance. Striking is another position. It's got an element of chemistry in it. There has to be some energy that drives you 
and it also invites luck. Sometimes you just come, you volley a ball, and then it touches the knuckle, it goes in. And then you tackle just for a tap in, it bounces luck as well. So I'm happy that luck is on their side, and they have to ride this way. <coughs> sure. Something that I noticed when you join the club, and players that you brought in, mm. also that you worked with before, is it a coincidence or intentional? And then secondly, on Shabbos, what exactly do you tell these players with bad reputation, or perceived bad reputations? Your final chance in the PSL, what type of message do you give them? I reflect my weaknesses. I am not saint. I reflect my weaknesses. The, the only way that someone who's at a position or who's not at the preferred position, the only way that they can come out of it is to show them that listen, I'm, 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 I'm also part of it. I'm human. I made a lot of mistakes. So when you reflect on your mistakes, it strengthens them. Let me cite an example. Let's say today, so writes an article about me. As Steve Compella, we saw Steve Compella doing this and this and this and the pa 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 pa. I'm depressed and I'm saying that. Like, so, okay, but anyway, I have to chin up and move on. The next day, then my father writes about somebody, about something even worse than what I went through. You know, that big mistake of that particular person is an inspiration to me. It gives me that, oh, goodness me. And there's people who are even worse. So you as a person who's working with people who've gone through things, show your vulnerability. You gotta show that person, I'm weak, I make mistakes, I'm human. And then the minute to take them to that level, then they accept their mistakes as mistakes and they can correct them. But if I come here like I'm a crystal clear guy, all this and that, I never make mistakes, you're depressing these folks. Now, luckily I've worked with them. I know all of them. Before you can work with a professional, you gotta understand the person. Because before they are a professional, they're a human being. So deal with a human being. The professional will cry. Now most of us are looking at working with a professional and you neglect the person. You can't, even at your workplace. The minute they treat you like a human being and not a stat, not a guy who submits unbelievable stories, they must understand that house family then when they know house family, or, or you said there was a wedding, who's getting married by your place? No, man, my daughter, cousin, whatever. You know, you, you have a different perspective of your job because you understand that they have interest in you as a person than professional. But there's others, they don't even care. Whether somebody's sick at your home or money has passed on, whatever, they want their job. You will be detached to those people because they are not attached to your person. They are attached to you as a professional. I get attached to players as a person. They must understand that I'm human. The professional will thrive. And yes, I went to them at different levels. Not that I, I, I deliberately wanted to. They were available, but it takes me back to what is the value that you bring in an environment? When I came to Moroka Solos and David Mohasha and the people at Moroka Solos said, okay, come work with us. Obviously, there's something that I must come along with. If you are employed and there's no value air from you, what is the use of your being employed? With? My coming to Moroba Solos, it means I have to bring some attraction. There's value that you bring. Could I have invited Jali because he says, okay, I work with this guy, I understand this guy, whether it was national team or whatever. He comes and the club obliges because, okay, we can afford this and not a perfect. Mango, perfect. Zuma, perfect. Who else, perfect. And then you find others who work with Makubela, you can, Charlie, I work with at Aros. Palani. Palani as well. Maybe then it says to me, I'm a dinosaur in the PSL. I've worked with everybody. So wherever I go, I come across people I've worked with, even coaches for that matter. I think I've been done in the PSL. And some of these folks, I work with a junior level. There's players, Lee Langenfeld from Stellenbosch. I worked with Lee at under 23, up until the E2s, look how old they are. That's how far, how far I come in the league and even in, in, in the game in South Africa. But one has to still respect the game. And every time you have an encounter with them, yourselves included, always maintain a higher level of respect and recognition of people. <coughs> Coach, um, amongst the, the signings that you've had this season, is uh, to see, to see the, uh, 
what is those who don't understand the You know what happened with the voice? We were looking for a center back. We had been checking and checking and checking. And then Coach Musanya Tama says, I'm an honor of Fana who was at Stellenbosch, who was CBA. And I remember this guy vividly said, No man. I remember when we played them, I was still at Sundowns. This guy was there. Perhaps he says, No, he's available. I said, Available? How come? I couldn't understand. And then I said, Coach Mlet, bring him, let him come train with us. Who was he comes? He trains with us. I can't believe my eyes, man. We play a rondo. He comes out. He's confident. Technique. You can. This guy is even intelligent. He talks. Got personality. He's got physique. And I'm going to wait. What happened with this guy? And then I go to coach. He was a coach. I don't know what's happening now. Now I don't want to ask him direct route now. How, how did you come up? I don't know how he came out from studies. But I must thank Stevie, my name sake, for letting this guy out. Because he's a left footed centre back. Is good in the air, compose on the ball, can build from the ball, from the back, he can charge like any other person. There's areas that he can improve. But Ovus was just jackpot. And he fits. Then we played him against Mamelodi Savas, first match in the MTN 8. The guy plays well, I'm saying, I am saying, nobody knows how it came about. But sometimes, as we always say, the energies that you connect with, Depending how you connect with that, if you connect with energies the right way, they will reward you the right way. Who will support you? Colleagues.